Hey, this is Nick. Today we're talking about your bill pay process for your construction or renovating business and how we can use Builder Trend and integrate it with QuickBooks Online. This integration has gotten really, really strong. We just have to have an established process and understand exactly how this works. Now we go into this topic in great detail in our course, Builder Books Academy, but we're going to get into it here as well. Now, the first thing we have to get out of the way when it comes to accounts payable, when it comes to paying bills on your construction projects, I want you to initiate all accounts payable in Builder Trend. I feel really strongly about this. I'm going to talk about it in the next slide here. Um, that is something that I want you to have as part of your process. That doesn't mean that every single expense that exists on a construction project must be entered in Builder Trend. I have my opinions on that as well, but accounts payable specifically, anything that we are paying to a vendor um, and we have terms on accounts payable, we're going to initiate from Builder Trend for sure. Now, why is that the case? So it's a best practice so we can get the best out of both systems here. So first, it's part of your overall process. So Builder Trend's got a really good system for estimate to bid to purchase order to bills. And we want to make sure that we can do as much of that as possible in Builder Trend. It links to the schedule. So your bills are going to be linked to your Builder Trend schedule. So as your schedule moves in or out, the due dates on those bills can move as well. So for example, I'm going to owe the drywall bill once drywall is complete. Well, if drywall is taking longer, that due date will automatically dynamically update, something QuickBooks will not ever do. Seamless delegation. So we don't necessarily need to provide access to QuickBooks for folks within our team to manage bills, to pay bills. They can do it all right there in Builder Trend, and we can have uh, a little bit more gatekeeping on the uh, QuickBooks side of things. Enhanced job costing. So the more that we enter into Builder Trend, the better we're going to be at job costing, understanding if our project is on budget, and if it's not, why it is not. The more details, the better. And lastly, this is something that I've been doing a lot, is making use of estimates and draft bills. That means creating bills before we actually receive them so that we can start to forecast cash flow and just understand where things are going to be so we're not caught off guard. Okay. Um, and lastly, we can record the payment from either system. So even if you don't want to use the payment from Builder Trend, which you maybe should, but even if you don't want to do that, you can still record payment offline. You can write a check. You can give cash. You can do it through QuickBooks, something else. And we can still sync the two together really seamlessly, all right? So these two work really nicely together, and especially if we have our process built out. Let me show you what we're talking about here. So here I have Builder Trend on the left side of my screen and QuickBooks on the other. I've got this project at 365 Central Park. Now for one, if I add a bill to uh, QuickBooks here, okay, for this project, it will show up in my Builder Trend job costing, but it'll show up as an other expense, like an other QuickBooks expense, and I'm not get, able to get much detail out of it, right? And I'm managing the due date of it all on QuickBooks. So instead, I want to do it from Builder Trend. So I'm going to go to Bills, which I'm in right now, and I'm just going to create a bill, and we'll just call this one uh, maybe Demo, okay? So I, I received a bill that I have to pay for my demo contractor, so we would put them in here. Okay, and um, in this case, not to a purchase order. I'm gonna show you how a purchase order would work in a second. So what's the date of this bill that we're receiving? And then here's what's awesome about this. We can link it, the due date, to the schedule. So once demo is due, that is when this bill is going to be due, all right? Or if we actually received it and we have terms on it or something like that, we can just choose the date. And we say that, all right, June 16th, now I'm gonna put it to um, you know maybe a two week, whatever, okay? And we can indicate our line items. This is where we're going to be matching exactly with QuickBooks on our cost code to products and services. We have separate videos on that, definitely check that out. But this would just be demo. In this case, I'm gonna pick demolition subcontractor right here. Let's just say it's 4,500 bucks, okay? Now what I love about this whole system is I'm gonna save this and Here's what I've, I've been able to do. I've added some custom fields. This is what I'm talking about with process. We're not able to do this kind of stuff on QuickBooks, but I've added some custom fields here down below to say like, who pays this bill? And we're defaulting it to the controller. So in my system, you know, we have the controller, who the person who's really in charge of accounts payable, and then admin or project manager. So basically everything's gonna default to the controller. If there's an event where the controller thinks this bill is a small amount or something that I don't have time to pay, I want to delegate it, they can go ahead and delegate it to somebody else. And you can build into your system that, hey, the admin or whoever that person is hat now is responsible for paying this. I've also added a status here that helps me understand the difference between an estimated bill and an actual. I'm going to talk about that in detail when I talk about the purchase orders. In this case, it's going to be an actual bill, like I actually got it from my vendor. All right, so I'm going to save that. And then again, what we can do, even though I'm saying it's an actual bill, there are quite a few stops uh, to make sure we don't send it to QuickBooks until we're ready. So this is really saying, 
This is existing builder trend. I'm gonna X out of here for a second. There's the bill here. If I go to my job costing budget, I will see the, the bill show up for demo as well. So there's that $4,500 for demo. Okay, it doesn't yet, here I am on QuickBooks, it doesn't yet show up on QuickBooks. And that's a good thing. We're able to play with it and mess around with it and, and edit it. And it's not until we kind of finalize it that we can say, now it's time to push it over to QuickBooks. Because we can work with it so much better in Builder Trend. Again, changing the date, editing um, exactly how it goes and, and adding documentation, all of that. And now, like if it's time to pay it, this is usually the point in time where I'm saying, all right, we're gonna actually pay this thing. Let's send it to QuickBooks. Let's mark ready for payment. And at that point in time, it's going to send the bill over to, to QuickBooks. And then it sits in QuickBooks for a second, and then we decide how are we actually going to pay that. So let me refresh on the QuickBooks side of things. Now, of course, this integration requires that you have a few things synced up, your cost codes with products and services, your projects themselves, and your vendors, okay? So here we go, $4,500 showing up in my QuickBooks now. And what I love about this is even if you love to pay bills out of QuickBooks, we don't need to adjust that process at all. You can go here and schedule payment. You can write them a check and then mark is paid. In fact, I'm gonna do that real quick. Notice on Builder Trend, bounce back over here, this shows that it's been sent to QuickBooks, right? And so I could pay this right here. I can pay online right here if I'm using Builder Trend payment or not. Let it sit here, right? And then I could do my payment stuff all through QuickBooks. So I can mark this as paid. I can indicate that it came from that certain account. If I save this payment right here, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna to wanna to see that show up on the QuickBooks status with a refresh. So I, I do a refresh here and I'm gonna see, hopefully, a paid bill, right? So no matter where I pay it, I'm still able to maintain both. All right now this is showing, coming off of my filter. Okay, there is my demo bill. All right, so I'm loving the idea of creating it all in Builder Trend, sending it over to QuickBooks, and then we pay it however we want. I'm gonna do a couple more examples here. I mentioned that we're able to really maintain our overall process if we're creating bills in Builder Trend as well. And that really comes to my estimate, to my bid, to my purchase order, to my bill. I'm not able to do much of that in QuickBooks. QuickBooks does have a purchase order to bill functionality, but it's not tied to any kind of estimate. It's not tied to any kind of schedule, and it's not really that useful. If you're paying for Builder Trend, you should absolutely be using that process, right? Estimate to bid to purchase order. So let me show you what that is. Now I've got an estimate and I've gotten, I've already gotten to some bids. So if I have a bid package open, say for plumbing here, right? And I'm soliciting bids. Nothing has been set in stone yet, but I got a couple different bids here and I accept one. This is a process that you should think about building out here. So if I accept this bid here, all right, I'm not gonna notify the winner. Um, I'm not gonna notify the loser, but I, I am gonna modify the schedule item. Uh, for plumbing, and I'm just going to make sure that that vendor gets added there. So I'm gonna click approve, okay? Now it's going to bring up the plumbing item here. Now I've got them on there, that's good. So see that link to the schedule is pretty cool, right? So we have that assignment there, and then we get to do something really great as well. So I have this approved bid, okay? And I can go right down here to say, now that I've approved the bid, this should be part of your process to now create a purchase order, right? We've agreed to this bid, rough plumbing and finished plumbing. Let's create a purchase order. This is saying that thank you for everything and submitting the bid. I am agreeing to pay you this much for the work. We're gonna create a purchase order such that we know how much those bills are gonna be. We're building in a proactive way to avoid surprises on getting bills from vendors, right? We're estimating, we're getting bids, we're building POs at every step of the way. We are building in certainty that this is what we're going to get charged. So here's my purchase order. Okay, again, QuickBooks has purchase orders, but not to this level, right? And at this point in time, nothing has been sent to QuickBooks for this plumbing yet, nothing at all, okay? So it doesn't exist yet. I can work in here, I can adjust it. Nothing has hit my accounting books yet. Here I have this purchase order, right? And what I'm gonna wanna do with this is link it to the schedule. I'm gonna say that this entire purchase order will be complete once finished plumbing is complete or the finished plumbing inspection is complete, actually. Go ahead and save that. And then I'm gonna approve it. Now, we could and probably should be sending out to our vendors to have them approve and sign off. In this case, I'm just going to manually approve. When I manually approve this purchase order, we're again gaining some really strong data points for our job costing. I'm gonna go ahead and manually approve that. And if I go to my job costing budget, what we get to now that we have an approved purchase order is a committed cost. 
So there's my committed cost of $8,500 and $4,000 for plumbing shows up here as that purchase order. Okay. And we're just able to see, you know, I don't have any bills on that yet, but we're able to see what I can, uh, what I can anticipate here. What we don't want to have is a huge project with an estimate. And then we don't know our actuals. We don't know our committed costs until we actually get the bill from the vendor. We have been doing so much work ahead of time to think about what that amount is going to be. Let's record it and let's keep it in our system. So there's my purchase order. Nothing has hit QuickBooks yet, but now what we can do is we can create what I call estimated bills, right? I haven't gotten actual bills from this vendor yet, and there's a chance that they're gonna vary slightly from their purchase orders, but right now, the, the information that we know is that we're probably gonna get a bill for a rough plumbing at 8,500. We're probably gonna get, get a bill for 4,000 for finish. So why don't we put that in the system, right? So I'm gonna go new bill here, and I'm gonna do we're probably gonna get a 100% of rough bill when the rough is done. So I'm gonna create a bill here and I'm gonna call this, you know, we can call it plumbing one, I can call it rough plumbing, whatever I wanna do there. It's linked to a purchase order. And my bill due date is going to be linked to my rough plumbing inspection. Once they get inspected and everything looks good, I am going to owe them $8,500, at least to the best of my knowledge. Now here, payer controller, and this is where I'd put status as estimate. I haven't gotten this yet from my vendor. I think this is what it's gonna be, but we don't know yet if there's any change orders. We don't know yet if there's anything that went wrong that they have to bill more or less than at 8,500. So we're just gonna park this here. We're gonna say save and close that bill, okay? So we've saved and closed that one bill. It shows up here against that purchase order. And here's what I love about how Builder Trend does this. I build 8,500, I've got 4,000 left outstanding. So one thing that you should build into your process here is looking at purchase orders. I'm gonna to go to my purchase orders here. You should really try to get to have a purchase order for all the major items within your project, okay? So here I have plumbing, and what I love how it does, it shows you here's the total cost of it, here's how much you build, and here's you know how much you've, you've necessarily maybe paid, all right? So it's really, really good. I'm gonna click into this again, and my goal is going to be to have all of it build. Right, so that I'm accounting for all of it. If I look back at my job costing budget, because I've added that bill for that estimate, that 8,500 is gonna show up as an actual cost. Not yet on the finish, I got one more step there. I'm gonna go down here and go bill remaining. Now these actual bills that I'm gonna be receiving might change as I mentioned, but that's okay. We always have the option to uh, update because we haven't sent them to QuickBooks yet. All right, so finished plumbing inspection, that's when this one's going to be due. I haven't sent it to QuickBooks yet. Status is going to be an estimate. I'll save and close this. All right, so I've saved and closed this. Now the whole thing has been billed, love that, right? Now whenever I receive that actual bill, we finish the rough plumbing inspection and they send me the actual bill, I would go into that rough plumbing bill and I would check, I just received the document. Is it 8,500 or is it a little bit less, a little bit more for whatever reason? I'm going to update this here with the financials and move my status to actual. This is something I built in. This is not native to Builder Trend. So if you find it useful, you would add custom fields there. This helps me understand, you know, what are we projecting out? We think we're gonna get and what have we actually gotten that would, I would have an attachment there as well. I'd send it to QuickBooks, mark it ready for payment. All right, that's kind of the stage, right? So I'm gonna see this hopefully show up in QuickBooks now. What I love about this is it hits QuickBooks only when it's like actually a reality. And pretty much for me, it's pretty much when I'm actually paying the bill as well. All right, so here's the bill itself. I use the bill pay. That's not what this video is about right now. So to kind of expedite this, I'm just gonna mark this one as paid as well. I'm gonna save it here. Refresh my status over on Builder Trend. It's gonna show as a paid bill, right? And then looking at the purchase order, now I've got the total purchase order of 12.5. I paid 8,500 of it, and I've got the other 4,000 billed and zero outstanding. That's exactly what I wanna see. Really, really useful, right? And we could do all of this in Builder Trend, and then we still maintain the accounting side on QuickBooks. This is why you absolutely, in my opinion, should be initiating all bills in Builder Trend. There's still a time and a place to have expenses in QuickBooks. We have separate videos on that. But for accounts payable and bills, I really want you to start embracing the idea of a process like this. More than anything though, initiate your bills in Builder Trend. Make sure that they're ready to go, set, then send them over to QuickBooks, pay however you want to, and then the two will stay in sync on the payment side as well. Let me know if you have questions on this. Let me know if you have suggestions on the process. And as I mentioned, we go into this in great detail and so much more in our course, Builder Books Academy. We'd love to see you there. 
as well. And I look forward to seeing you on our next YouTube video.